Listen. One man of God announced for church. He saw the women. If you know you love your husband, I want you to sow a seed according to the love you have for your husband. Now one woman, I first come, the woman just dropped 500,000. Go on. The pastor said, wonderful. So while we look at the subject of comedy in the church, this is our part two of the conversation. So I'm going to read some of the comments we had from the part one and then we'll continue with the conversation today. So some of you dropped some really interesting comments in our first part and I thought to read some of them. One from uh, YouTube and also one from Facebook since I'm posting on both platforms for us to have a very fruitful conversation over here so looking at what happened on youtube just picking a random comment here i saw that uh omoye omoye monome uh led tv said here ephesians 5 verse 4 most times i like to focus on the comment that has to be backed with scriptures even though sometimes people can use scriptures to try to <laughs> even lie with scriptures as well um, Ephesians 5 verse 4, she said here, talks about this. Things like this should not be allowed in the church. Instead, to preach the message of instead to preach the message of repentance, you evil pastors will bring in comedians to start cracking jokes for sinners to feel comfortable in their sin. God will judge you all. Okay, now that was a direct hit at 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 the pastors. And then Ibrahim here said, comedy or what you deceptively call Christian comedy is unscriptural and should never come in the church. Those doing it know very well they are against the scripture. Now, talking about those doing it know very well they are against the scripture. Uh, let's first of all, before we get onto that, let me look at what happened on Facebook. Um, John Might says here, the question should be whether the entire concept of comedy is good or bad. Because this is this this we are talking about is we individuals, not neither the building nor pulpit. And we the church listen watch and enjoy these comedies attend their shows outside church buildings don't forget we are the church so the question round we have to ask ourselves is i think i like the um question that john might is asking comedy itself is it good or bad now we establish okay let me not say we because i establish the fact that based on our previous video comedy itself the concept of it is most times lies Okay, but lies that are being made to become funny. Only they know if that is true or not. But most of the time, you will know that those things are lies. Now, if it's happening outside the church and it's for the entertainment purpose of it, then it can look, you can look at it in different facets. When it now becomes a normalcy in the church, what then should be the house of God? If we understand that you and I are the church, we are the body of Christ. When it now comes to the organized church whereby, you know, there are buildings and then these are places that are called holy places and the altars are called sacred places like we looked at in our previous video based on the comment of one of the reverends we allow comedians to come into church and be playing with holy things of the scripture i still tell people today one of the most terrible assault of hell against the kingdom of god in the last days is the invasion of comedians on the pulpit then that happening in that house what should the house of god be called a house of what you could complete that in the comments the subject right now now goes beyond just looking at we being the church but looking at the location where it's happening which i think is the reason for this video i'm talking about now for example after it have you ever seen a president of a nation with braided hair a man what you are into has placed a limit on your destiny you scrape this or remove your head. You have placed a limit on your destiny. Your son is putting earrings and you are laughing. What a kind of person. Your son. What an abuse to your, to your integrity as a father. Now, can you imagine first that my son breaks here? Now, think of it. Even if I were not a pastor, think of it. Which house will he enter? Now imagine that my son puts earring. The air will be caught practically. Your car is a show of gross irresponsibility and abuse of creation. Don't do it. Now if you have anointing more than Christ and you are a man, you have earring, you will never stand on this altar till you die. 
if an angel appeared to me, I would tell the angel to first remove your ear. You don't know what being decent does. It opens impossible doors. Being decent. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. We walk by common sense. We run by principles. But we only fly by instruction. We need to get this thing going. The reason you have so many bad eggs in the West is because children are let loose by the laws of the land to do what they like. They marry chief and divorce chief. If you don't train them, they will become a trash on the street. If they are not instructed, they never become high flyers. Instructions. Instructions are the highways of distinction. You need to instruct. Your children can come home under your roof at 11 p.m. and you can't tell where are you coming from. I see if I even knew. Recently, I was scrolling on Instagram and I came across this particular video of Prophet Jeremiah Motobu for you. Now, in this case, I wouldn't see Paul Adefarasen or Apostle Suleiman or or any of the. Uh, churches that get to bring in comedians we like to call it secular comedians because right now we have people that are called christian comedians we'll look at that in our next video and people that are called secular comedians so someone like this one now someone like him now would be called a christian comedian even though sometimes when you look at his comedies and things he makes fun of celebrate grace and all that there's also one other person that also uses that, that same idea of celebrate grace you see that there is just a niche when it comes to okay christian and christian comedy of course you read in the comment that one of my audience is like no there's nothing like christian comedy but what do you think about it yourself as a christian watching me Papa, if you want your wife to hear you, do five things for your wife. Mama, tell her, if you want to respect them, do five things for your wife. Oh, yeah, say, number one, eh? always give your wife money. Hey! Number one, Mama, tell her, always give your wife money. Number two, don't forget to give her money. Number two, Papa, here, don't forget to give her money. Number three, Papa, keep giving her money. Number three, Papa, keep giving her money. Number four, don't go out without giving money. Oh, what do you do? Don't go out without giving money. Number five, if the money finish, go and borrow money. Papa, if my, my money finish, go and borrow money. Because women, they like money, yo. If you don't get money, they don't go hear you. If you don't get money, they don't go hear you. We men they like money. I, I am a baby, baby. I am a da bra ba da bra ba da do it. Because last time we looked at a video, this particular video in our part one, of what a Christian comedian was saying in church about fighting and comparing the church to the world. And it was just funny, even though it was realistically factual with what he was saying but cracking jokes with things like that that christians consider to be sacred or would i say you know <laughs> is always very very controversial so looking at this video right now let's look at it together of jeremiah motivofin bringing this talented comedian who even with the beat of a song that is what makes his trademark as a comedian is from techno song but he's using the beat of that to crack to make comedy as a singer and jeremiah motifuin brought him to his church <laughs> even with the trailer jeremiah motifuin was wearing it was quite interesting but that's just probably his new fashion style but look at what he's singing in the song see husband and wife they be like a woman and woman see husband and wife looking good you they praise god you know me say you go they look tata do you the praise almighty God, don't mean say you go look anyhow. Aye, Papa, looking sharp. Mama na baby oko. Papa, looking sharp. Mama na baby oko. Now you have to know something. I'm, not, I'm looking at the audience, looking at the phone, and like I read in one comment, someone said that the idea of bringing comedians to church only proves that 
the church itself doesn't have the Holy Spirit, but it's all about pacifying men and just making the men themselves feel very comfortable in the church, just like they will feel comfortable on the outside. So in the end, nothing fruitful is coming out of that. What do you think about a comment like that? Because looking at someone that is quote and unquote, this same person, of course, is going to perform on AY Live or maybe on any other quote and unquote secular comedy event. And the same person is being brought into the church and is cracking comedy, even using the pastors themselves, the geos. Look at how he said that Jeremiah Motifuin and his wife look like <laughs> Yahoo boy and Yahoo woman. Come on, you guys have watched my videos here tons and tons of time. I, I would tell you categorically with the things that Jeremiah Motifuin does in his church, you can actually get to ascribe him as such. I'm not joking, okay? But the way they get to make a joke about that, and the funny thing is that if you look at the title there, he says that his wife is a prophetess. And we have looked at this particular subject on this platform before. Maybe we have to look at it again. If because someone is a pastor or an apostle or a leader in the church, does it mean that the wife is automatically that? I've told people not to call my wife a prophetess. And let me say it again. No, when you see my wife, don't call her prophetess. The anointings of God and the ministries are not sexually transmitted. The fact that I'm a pastor and I'm a prophet doesn't mean that my wife is a prophetess. She said, when you see her, call her doctor. Don't put burdens on her. If I wanted to marry a prophetess, I would have gone to Achea Mountains and find one for wife. And it will come home and No. Don't frustrate her. That is who she is. Now she's not a lady pastor. So please, don't call her lady prophetess. Yes, there is a dimension of the prophetic that will rest upon a wife, that will rest upon the children, because it is infectious. She can see, but please, I beg you, she's a medical doctor. When have you seen the wife, just like the husband always done, can I pro, can I pro, can I prophesy? When have you seen the wife? I have never even known the wife's name until now. When have you ever seen the wife do the prophetic jamboree that you see happen most times? <laughs> Of course, you and I know that based on the facts of things you have looked at here, these people are just a bunch of jokers. I'm just being sincere with you. But, you know, we have to always be on a very, you know, cordial level on this platform because I know that you are smart enough to really recognize and know the truth when you see it right before you. Now, think about the huge audience that are over there and ask yourself a question. With these people themselves being entertained and having this in the church, should we really focus on the person that is being brought into the church or about the context of what is happening and if you are focusing about the context of what is happening with the beats of the song that is being used we know where it's come from and then what is even being cracked as a joke in the process of the whole comedy you now get to wonder to yourself what is really going on in the church now some of you are going to say in the comment that oh this is not the house of god this is just a uh -huh. Like I've told you before in, the, in my previous videos, there's a difference between the body of Christ and the body of men. But even in the body of Christ, there, there exists a body of men that, of course, in their organization and their relationship, are seen to be working for, quote and unquote, the body of Christ or being in the body of Christ. But it now takes you yourself to sit down and observe what is really happening, understanding the purpose for why this or this or this or that is done, to decipher as to, okay, what is really going on here? Because if you look at it very clearly, I'm not saying that any pastor that has brought comedians or keep bringing comedians is a, a false pastor or whatever. So why would I even be talking about someone like Jeremiah Motivufuin or the pastors like Pura De Farasin or other ones that get to bring comedians to their church to come and perform? Or would I say come and entertain them? Because this is done in the name of Christ. This is done in the name of Christianity. Are they Christians or something? It's just a matter of choice. You are watching this video because it's more of like a Christian commentary or a Christian discussion. But while you're watching this, you have to also really think to yourself as a Christian. If I'm sitting down and enjoying this particular form of entertainment in the church as comedy, what is the subject of what is happening? That is why there are many pastors, I will say it many times, I don't even need, there are many pastors that stand on the pulpit and even when they are not even cracking comedy, they are lying with stories they tell, testimonies they tell. We have looked at it as an example with Hubert Angel, 
that want to happen with Apostle Suleiman, how they get to tell stories, they see Jesus, they see angel, they see this. Some of them are blatant lies. How Ubat Angel was talking about the whole miracle money shenanigan, we exposed that right here on the platform of how all of that was staged. It was a, a full blown lie being, you know, aired. And people were believing because I don't know if you understand. So I see no, I, it makes sense why a pastor would invite a comedian whom when it comes to their craft even though it's them telling lies but making people laugh which that is their craft but bringing them to church for them to also exercise that craft in the church and for the christians themselves to be entertained like when you leave that particular setting after that so imagine someone that came in there for the first time and on his face of coming to church he's coming to come and enjoy comedy just like what he would re enjoy normally on the outside and the person of course will feel comfortable this is my kind of place right and tomorrow if the person does not enjoy that kind of entertainment that's why most of the times you see that many of these prophetic churches hey can i prove poo? can i prove poo? can i hey can i speak to you can I? all of those things i see them to be entertainment most times some of most of them are very much staged we have seen many of them. So such kind of person is going to be comfortable in that environment being entertained in that particular respect, even though that will be now seen as, oh, God is working. But bringing a comedian and the comedian still using the same mic, using the same audience to, you know, do their craft, even being in the, being in the, in, in the church and the person is more like a secular comedian. Wouldn't the environment of a church even condition the person to be more of like, hmm, maybe more spiritual comedy? Yeah. Now, think about the word I said, a more spiritual comedy or a more Christian comedy. Because in my next video, I'm going to be looking at a Christian comedian in Nigeria like he is being put. Yes, yes, there are Christian comedians like the ones you have seen earlier on who actually organized a show last year and it was a Christian comedy and it was actually very very um much commended about based on the difference between that and the regular comedy shows you will see like the ay live basket mount and all that now am i saying comedy in itself is a wrong craft or a wrong profession i wouldn't say that just like we understand in the scripture when it comes to doing something the purpose for which you are doing a particular thing is most important based on the community of people gathered over there in the church and the idea that a particular location or building is a sacred place for a particular purpose bringing in a comedian into that particular location more like a secular comedian who is also a christian comedian like how akpororo is seen to be quote unquote a christian comedian who will crack jokes in churches and then also go crack jokes in ay live or other platforms it's not as if the jokes are different when they're in church or when they're in different places or something. It's more like the same jokes, but of course, with the <laughs> spiritual anointing on that. You now get to see that idea of the people that we see to be, this person is in the world, is the same people that are being given a high place in the church to entertain you. So you that is now watching me right now, before we are quick to point fingers, I think we also need to sit down and really understand what is going on here because if your pastor which is one thing here anyone watching me right now on this particular conversation if your pastor or your daddy jiho brings comedians into church you would defend this particular craft or defend this particular occurrence with everything you know yes of course because you have seen your leader do it but you need to get to a point whereby you sit down and ask yourself is this thing right and that's why i'm bringing up this conversation because it's, it's, it's taking to center stage if you think it's okay you might have your reasons for that if you think it's not okay you might have your reasons for that but you have to get to a point where you decide for yourself if you are going to entertain this or be part of this happening in a place you call the church do you understand or if you are going to be part of a group of people that enjoy this sum of entertainment so are you going to be in church and then your pastor brings in a comedian to come and entertain you someone you might probably paint to be someone of the world or whatever would you stand up and leave that particular premises and be like i'm not going to be part of this because i am here to worship god i'm here to serve god or are you going to sit down there based on the authority of your papa over what you believe to be right or wrong that is where this conversation is leading to i don't know if you understand
Till I see you in my next video, my name is George and give me the courage to insult back anybody that insults me. Amen.